Onc Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onc Live. So the decision to start treatment for ITP, again, it, it needs to be um, individualized for the patient, what's happening with the patient at the time. Sometimes you're going to initiate treatment to make the diagnosis. Sometimes you're going to mitigate a risk of bleeding. Uh, and sometimes you're uh, going to treat active bleeding. So uh, if a patient is in an emergency situation, you know, then it's a no-brainer. Platelet count is less than 10,000. Uh, usually patients will be hospitalized at that point and they will be receiving rescue therapy. Um, so, you know, when you have an emergency situation, you would initiate treatment. Um, if not, then the decision to start treatment is, of course, if you're trying to make the diagnosis or if you think that there is an imminent, uh, imminent risk of bleeding. First line therapy for ITP is not likely to change, in my opinion. Uh, it, according to the most recently published ASH guidelines and international consensus report, first-line therapy is steroids. And uh, most people will use one milligram per kilogram of prednisone. And the, um, the amount of stress dose prednisone is variable. Uh, there are not, uh, there's not trial data to recommend an exact course of steroids. So what many people will do is treat with one milligram per kilogram of prednisone until the platelet count normalizes, and then perhaps treat for an extra week at that dose beyond that, and then initiate a taper. Some people treat with one milligram per kilogram of prednisone for two weeks as an arbitrary time period and then initiate a taper, and the taper should be slow over a course of probably four to six weeks. So that is um, initial therapy of prednisone. What is the contemporary approach to therapy really involves what's called initial therapy or what's called first line agents and then second line agents. The ASH guidelines and also the international working group say that corticosteroids, either prednisone Methylprednisolone or pulse dexamethasone constitute the first primary treatment. Now, in patients who have significant thrombocytopenia with bleeding manifestations, an adjunct to acutely raise the platelet counts can include intravenous immunoglobin. Nowadays, in younger individuals without risk of vascular disease, the treatment would ideally be um, approximately. Uh, a gram uh, per kilogram uh, given either one or two day days in a row, or in patients who are older and risk of vascular disease, either four to 500 milligrams per kilogram given over several days. In regards to the corticosteroids, it is recommended even when you use intravenous immunoglobin to think about having patients on corticosteroids. Prednisone can be given at a milligram per kilogram dose or dexamethasone used at, as a pulse at 40 milligrams uh, a day for four-day pulses. But the advantage of having a patient on steroids when you use intravenous demoglobin is you reduce the risk of aseptic uh, meningitis, which is really one of the more devastating and anxiety-producing circumstances, both for the patient and the doctor, since the patients present with severe headaches. There's always the anxiety that they may have an intracerebral bleed. Finally, the other agent that ha can be used, at least in the United States, is anti-RHD. And carefully, you should evaluate a patient who uses anti-RHD. It induces a, uh, a hemolytic anemia and blocking the uh, phagocytosis of the platelets. But it can be associated with, in some cases, severe hemolysis. It's been associated in the improper use and even in rare cases of disseminate intravascular clotting. Patients who are going to use anti-RHD should be screened for their RH factor. They need to be RH positive, and to make sure they do not have a positive Coombs test, because some of these patients with ITP can have a positive Coombs test, and although they may not have overt hot hemolysis, the addition of anti-RHD can lead to severe hemolysis. Patients who receive primary treatment, 80% will respond. 
either with prednisone alone or a combination of prednisone with intravenous immunoglobulin. Patients who are acutely bleeding, I should mention, can also be given platelets, but only in the background of significant bleeding. And although you will not see an incremental rise in the platelet count, it can be associated with cessation of bleeding if you use platelets in addition to intravenous immunoglobulin and a corticosteroid.